HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. Coming up on this edition of HCAM News, we will get you up to date with Hillers Sports, including the Hillers girls tennis team who finished undefeated in the TVL. A beloved restaurant in Hopkinton has opened their doors at a new location. The Chamber of Commerce hosted the annual State of the Town Address, and Courtney will fill you in with what to expect on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Representative Carolyn Dykema stopped by The Spoon on their opening day, Wednesday, May 25th, for breakfast. Representative Dykema took a photo with owners Bill Morgan and Samantha Prescott. The Spoon derives from the locally famous Golden Spoon Restaurant, which closed March 2015 and relocated to One Lumber Street and has officially opened once again as The Spoon. Also on opening day for The Spoon, Father Cannon of St. John the Evangelist Parish gave The Spoon an opening day blessing. This photo courtesy of Hopkinton coffee break host Darlene Hayes. The Hopkinton Lions Club recently hosted their 40th anniversary. This photo is of their beautiful cake and is courtesy of Darlene Hayes. Hopkinton High School is for sale. Well, not really. This year's brilliant senior prank put Hopkinton High School on the real estate market as the seniors had their last day of school. This photo is courtesy of teacher Doug Scott. Speaking of Hopkinton High School, the class of 2017 had their Grand March and Junior Prom. You can find photos of every couple at the Grand March over on sceneinhopkinton.org. If you have a Hopkinton-related photo you would like to share, email it to us at news at hcam.tv. The Chamber of Commerce hosted the annual State of the Town Address at the HCAM Studios. Speakers included Town Manager Norman Kumalu, Chamber of Commerce President Scott Richardson, Superintendent of Schools Dr. Kathy McLeod, Board of Selectmen Co-Chair John Cotino, and local business owner Harold Nahigian. The speakers addressed what is happening currently in the town as well as goals going forward. The Chamber of Commerce hosted their annual State of the Town meeting live from the HCAM studios. Chamber President Scott Richardson talked about the purpose of the 2020 committee. So the, the name of the committee comes from our goal of attempting to increase our commercial tax base to 20% of our, of our overall tax base. Uh, the town has traditionally had a commercial tax base uh, input of about 17%. And that's kind of held steady over the years. Uh, as you know, the town is primarily a residential community uh, and even more so. So we feel at this point with the additional residential development, uh, with the uh, kind of the unknown impact of EMC's consolidation, uh, we may see that 17% potentially even reduce. So our focus is redoubled to, again, try and attract Prefer preferable and sustainable commercial development. Uh, 2020 committee is composed of Tim Kilduff, Finn Perry, Eric Sonnet, Harold Nahigian, uh, Kathy McLeod, Chuck Joseph, Darlene Hayes, and our B Board of Selectmen representative is John Catino. Richardson showed off a draft of a guide that will be available publicly outlining how the town works. Starting early in January, we said we really need a uh, document that really is something that we can uh, produce, uh, distribute, have available to, for businesses, for real estate uh, brokers, uh, to really show the benefits of uh, living here, working here, and uh, recreating here. 
So we do have uh, a booklet that we're working on in conjunction with uh, Norman's office uh, and with the Chamber's com Chamber Committee. It's about a 16-page document that uh, really kind of spells out, it's, we're calling it a business and community guide, uh, really spells out uh, what, how the town operates, uh, the features and benefits, and uh, we think it'll be a great document for uh, selling the town, uh, promoting the town, uh, and it'll also be available electronically on our websites and also for sending out to prospective businesses and residents. Selectman co-chair John Cotino talked about some of the goals of the board. We must look at Hopkinton not only from the perspective of a hiller, but from the viewpoint of an entire region. We must look at Hopkinton as a whole and see where we fit within that region. How we make the most of what projects we have it, uh, we have already implemented our new schools, library, legacy, the new DPW and the downtown beautification. Again, collaboration, communication, and education. In part of the update from the town manager, Norman Kamalu, he talked about the Main Street Corridor project. There are three key areas that have been identified as areas that we need to incorporate into the design going forward. These include realigning the Main Street, Cedar Street, and Grove Street intersection. With the changes in ownership, Master OT has shared with us that they would prefer to see the intersection straightened. Number two, through the fantastic work of our Trails Committee, we've identified an opportunity to extend the center trail through Main Street. Thus, the design for the Main Street Corridor project going forward will now incorporate a bike lane. And thirdly, much talked about, we are now integrating the undergrounding of utilities into the project design. So these are the three as elements that we're now adding to the design proposal that Mass DOT is reviewing. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Kathy McLeod spoke about some of the changes being made to keep up with the newly released statewide science standards. Under aligned curriculum, the focus for next year will be on preparing for the new science standards that have just been released April of this year. Um, that will include a new physics lab at the high school, which we're excited to need because of the demand for physics. We just cannot meet the need with um, the numbers of kids that want to be able to be taking that. And then at the middle school, creating an engineering lab. At the elementary level, we are looking at a model for bringing in science specialists so that we can more fully prepare kids for the, the new standards that have been uh, released. The full broadcast of the State of the Town Address is available on our YouTube page and also our website, hcam.tv. The beloved Golden Spoon Restaurant temporarily closed their doors in March 2015, and now, about 14 months later, they have reopened as The Spoon at their new location in a beautiful new plaza on One Lumber Street. The locally famous Golden Spoon opened their doors in 1981 as a coffee shop and turned into a full-service restaurant in 2001. The Golden Spoon became a Sunday morning tradition for many local residents. The Golden Spoon closed their doors in March 2015 to prepare for a relocation to One Lumber Street. Fourteen months later, the restaurant now known as The Spoon is back open for business and ready to once again become a local favorite. We're glad to be back, uh, we're glad to see a lot of our old friends. And, uh, Feels, feels like we never closed in a lot of ways. Despite being closed down for over a year, owner Bill Morgan has kept very busy. Now, uh, what'd you do in, um, in all those months that uh, you were closed down? <laughs> well, I was pretty busy. I, uh, I got married, I sold my house, I sold my, we sold my wife's house, I moved into another house, we opened this business, so, and I worked at another job in the meantime. So. It's been pretty, pretty busy, pretty busy time. Owners Bill Morgan and Samantha Prescott were happy to report a good amount of their employees are back. We retained a lot of the staff. Uh, 
What, how many sample um, Yeah, about solid five. A lot of the college-age kids came back, so a lot of the servers are back, which is good, in front of the house. 75%? Yeah. yeah, which is really nice. Now, how do you like this uh, new location here? We love it. Um, everything brand new, nicely decorated, um, you know, nice space, uh, close enough where everybody can find us. See our old location from there, so it feels great. The restaurant, now known as The Spoon, is open for business 5.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Monday through Saturday, as well as 4 to 8 p.m. Friday nights, and also Sundays 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. A lot more ahead on HCAM News, including a look at Hiller's sports as we enter the final few games of the spring sports season, and Courtney will get you up to date with the latest programming coming up on the HCAM channels. You're tuned in to HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. HCAM News Director Tom Nappy here. On Tuesday, May 31st at 7.30 p.m., Town Manager Norman Kumalu alongside DPW Director John Westerling will be hosting an automated curbside trash forum to discuss town trash pickup. Residents are invited to submit questions by asking questions live at the forum in the HCAM studios at 77 Main Street. You can also submit questions online at hcam.tv slash live or call in at 508-625-1640. The Automated Curbside Trash Forum will take place Tuesday, May 31st at 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Welcome back to HCAM News. We are into the last few weeks of the spring sports season and many Hillers teams are making the final push for the postseason. This past week, Hillers softball and baseball racked up big wins but first, here's what happened at the TVL Spring Track and Field Championships. In the TVL Spring Track and Field Championships, the Holliston girls dethroned the 16-time defending champion Hopkinton Hillers. Holliston won their first TVL track title since 1996. On the boys' side, the Norton boys took first place by just two and a half points over Hopkinton, the final tally was 76 to 73.5. In softball, 11 and 3 Westwood met up with 12 and 3 Hopkinton. The Hillers got the offense rolling in the bottom of the first. In the center field, Holly approaching third, Bennett up to second, and everyone's safe. Right up in the pitch. And this is on the ground, third base side. That's going to get through into left field. One run around, a second run coming around. Two to nothing, Hillers. A two RBI single by Kate Wellzell. And this is lined into center field. That'll drop down. A third run being waved around. Wellzell is going to come around to score. An RBI single for Lindsey Whittles. Bree Mirabli helped her own cause in the bottom of the third. Mid air and fell straight down as Mirabli crushes this one over to right field, and that is going to roll to the fence. Runner being waved around third. Mirabli is safe at second, and it's four to nothing. Hillers as Whittles comes around. The top of the Hillers batting order got the offense going once again in the fourth. And this is punched into center field. That'll drop down, one run in. Second run being waved around. It was bobbled by the right fielder. Two more Hillers runs come around to score on the single by Molly Bennett. Stanford deals. This is on the ground, past the reach of the shortstop. A runner being waved around as it is bobbled over in left field. And Heather Holly is safely aboard over at second base. And then once more in the fifth. That, and this is up the first base side. That'll get into right field. One run in. Second run being waved around, and it's nine to nothing, Hillers. A two RBI single for Katie Hawley. 
Hillers took the 9-0 shutout over Westwood, facing one of the best hitting teams in the TVL, did not phase Bree Mirabli a single bit. She struck out 12 in the victory. Molly Bennett went three for four in the win. She also scored a pair and drove in two runs. Katie Hawley also went three for four, scored two and drove in two. The Hillers would win their next two games, a nine inning six to one road win against Bellingham and a 9-8 win over Millis to improve to 15-3 on the season. Hillers baseball came into Thursday, May 19th, two wins away from a playoff spot and battled Millis on a rainy afternoon. The Hillers got some momentum in the first inning. Right up in the pitch. And that is hit in the left field. That'll drop in for a base hit and then get by the reach of Jared Pittman, the left fielder. Reynolds is going to keep going to third, being waved around. He's going to try to score, and he will score. It's going to be one to nothing Hillers. An RBI double for Drew Simi. And then some more in the fourth inning. Leg lift and the pitch. This is hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field, ranging over and making the catch. With no problem, but the runner will tag from third and score, and the Hillers back on top. And now another run going to try to score on the overthrow. Both runners safe. So LeBlanc comes around, and then Lehman comes around on the errant throw, and it's 3-1 to one Hillers. 3-0 Three heading into the top of the seventh. Things got a little bit and dicey. This is a slicer in a right field. That'll drop down. Runner will be held up at third. So a single, and that ball was thrown out of play. So Brooks will get the free path to home plate, and it's a three to two game. Onsi set to deliver. There's strike three, and the Hopkinton Hillers get the three to two victory over Millis. The Hillers came away with the victory. Tom Onsi grabbed his first save of the year as the Hillers improved to nine and seven with the three to two win over Millis. Jeff Haller pitched a gem striking out 10. Alex Reynolds, Jake LeBlanc and Sam Lehman all went one for three and scored a run in the victory. Drew Simi and Connor Hebert drove in the runs that allowed the Hillers to get within one game of clinching a playoff spot. Despite legendary coach Nancy Clark retiring prior to this season, the Hillers girls tennis team continued to dominate all season long. And on senior night, they celebrated the great year as well as finishing undefeated in TVL play. Get these group shots. <laughs> on senior night, the Hopkinton Hillers girls tennis team finished the 2016 season undefeated in the TVL under first-year head coach Christine Lyons. On senior night, the girls battled Westwood and took the match 3-2. to two. Sophomore Zoe Comadromos and senior Olivia Centrella closed it out for the Hillers in a doubles match. It feels so amazing. It feels great, especially, especially since this last match was riding on us. And we played a great season. Yeah, the whole team played a great season. <laughs> and how'd the uh, last match go? <laughs> well, we were down, we were split set, we were down. We, you know, our thing the whole season has been we are gonna come back, so we knew that if we just really focused, we could come back and win it for the team. Yeah. And we played really well, and as a team, so it's good. Really good. Yeah, it's really, it's really awesome. We haven't been undefeated in a while, so it's really cool. All right, can you talk about your roles on the team? Yeah, so I play singles. We've played a couple matches as doubles together, but we do a lot of team events. We try to get the team together as much as we can um, and just be the best leaders we can for everyone. All right, was there added pressure in this uh, Westwood matchup because being undefeated was on the table? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but it added to the excitement to the last match and got a lot of fans to cheer, which was really nice. Yeah. Right. It was our senior night, so we really wanted the win, too. It's pretty surreal right now. I couldn't be more happy with uh, the results of the season, but also with the girls. It's just been um, a phenomenal time. They're awesome players, but even better people, and I've had so much fun. I look forward to 
getting to the court every day and the fact that they just played so well. Um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm just so happy right now with how today's match went. All right, and uh, how was this uh, match with this uh, Westwood team? Was it, there a little added pressure seeing that being undefeated was on the table? I think going down to the fact that it was 2-2 in one more match um, decided it that it went into a third set, made it a uh, little stressful, but it was definitely worth it in the end, and it was huge today. On this year's team, there was a whole lot of skill, but also a whole lot of chemistry. Yeah, I, think I think it's, it's our dynamic. We all like really get along yeah. and um, our new coach Chrissy Lyons is just amazing and she always knows the right things to say to pump us up if we're down. So that's really helped the we're whole just season. Such a close team, so I think we definitely would have wouldn't have gone so far in the season if undefeated if we weren't so close. We're really close as a team and that like we really meshed really well together and we have some really nice like young talent too. <laughs> They're so close as a team, the way they all just kind of gelled together at the beginning made everything on court and off court awesome. They're really close and we do a lot of fun things and I think the fact that they are so close makes um, just the way they play together better. I think everybody has a fun time during practice and during matches and you know the chemistry is awesome. And, and tennis you need to have that and it's an individual sport that's also a team and it's it's awesome. I asked the head coach how she ended up in Hopkinton. So I played junior tennis and college tennis um, and I'm a teaching pro at a club nearby and when I found out that the coach was retiring I knew that I wanted to get that job really badly. I knew that this team was really strong and that there's always a really strong program here in Hopkinton and I was so excited when I got the position and I'm really excited for the future of this program and just for the rest of the season. Despite finishing the season undefeated in the TVL, there is still much work to be done as the postseason nears. Yeah, we'll have practice tomorrow. Um, the state tournament will start next week. Hopefully we'll have a bye in the first round, but I'm really excited about the tournament. I think that this team has so much depth that they'll be able to go very far, um, and I can't wait for it. Are you looking forward to the postseason? Yeah. I'm, I'm sad because it's my last season, but hopefully we'll do really well yeah. in tournament. So. Well, how does it feel to be uh, undefeated in your uh, last season? Really nice, like good win to go out. <laughs> I meant good way to go out. I'm sorry. <laughs> With summer fast approaching and school in its last few weeks, a whole lot of new programming will be coming your way on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney to tell you everything you need to know with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, May 28th at 1.30 p.m., the softball game versus Westwood will air, and at 3 p.m., the baseball game versus Millis will air. On Monday, May 30th at 6.30 p.m., learn how people 50 and up can find their encore career on a new senior view. I would say, based on my own personal experiences of dealing with people over the past, you know, 35 or so years, that it, maybe even 95% of them end up finding their job through networking. On a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry at 7 p.m., it's time for audience members to shine as they share poetry, stories, and songs. One of these days, now won't be long, you call my name and I'll be gone. On Tuesday, May 31st at 6 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. At 7.30 p.m., the Curbside Trash Forum will take place in the HCAM studios and will air live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, June 2nd at 6 p.m., the Senior Awards Night will air live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, June 3rd at 6 p.m., the Class of 2016 Graduation Ceremony will also air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Spring Pops concert will air with school bands, choruses, and orchestras performing beloved and popular tunes. If you want to know more about what we do, head to hcam.tv slash connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know about what's going on in town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. 
As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view the entire broadcast of the Chamber of Commerce State of the Town Address, plus much more. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at blackstonevalleywealth.com.